my lovely Floss Tube friends, and we're back again. It's like you can tell that it's that time of year where everyone's sort of trying to finish 2018 and work out what's happening for 2019. It's just, it's so much fun, so much fun. And the fact that I've actually got some time to do just a spot of planning, although I sort of had my plans set sort of in my head before we started even getting to this point of the year. Um, I've got the tiny decisions on my phone, which I have keyed in um, for the big projects and also for the small projects. So my plan of action, whether it actually pans out for the whole year or not, is we will only time will tell. Um, is to spin the wheel for both. So obviously it will spin the wheel for the big project and it will spin the wheel for my small project, which when I say small project, nine times out of 10, that will be the one that I'll either stitch in bed if I ever get to actually sit in bed and watch a bit of TV, which is really quite rare in this house, um, or when I am on my commute. So when I'm commuting, that's when I do most of my stitching on my smalls. So the plan of action is to try, yes, try, <laughs> to try and use, use the will to basically decide for me rather than me deciding. However, that said, just because I've got the tiny decisions on my phone and my intention is to spin the wheel for most of the project's choices, if on a certain day I'm not feeling the love, for that particular project, then I will switch out if I so wish. But that is the plan going forwards. It's basically just to try and take some of the decision making out of well, what do I actually fancy? What do I want to do now? That is the plan going forwards. Obviously, currently we have, if we include Mini Red Dragon, we have three Heaven and Earth Design full coverage pieces that are going to be on the go this year. So they will need to rotate, which is obviously the Peacock's Lagoon, uh, Mini Red Queen, Red Dragon, and Alternative Reality. So they will need to be sort of switched in and out. I've got my Chatelaine. I've got my Andromeda, which is my lady, and I've also got my Winter White Santa. Now, chances are, so in fact, the chances of this happening are 90%. So 90% chance that as soon as Christmas and New Year is over, my Winter White Santa and my Frosty Forest will not really make any amazing appearances because they're festively Christmas. And I can only seem to stitch on stuff either on the build up to Christmas, at Christmas, anything after that, I've just got no feeling for it at all because I, it's a Christmas thing, and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. So inevitably those two may sort of drop off a little bit and then reappear again later on in the year. And I'm fine with that, that can happen. No problem with that at all. Everything else I would like to try and incorporate into my tiny decisions and make sure that they, they everything gets a bit of a turn. That said, because I can and because it's me, there's a lot of stuff um, I say a lot of stuff. There's not a lot of stuff per se as in I have a load of stash, because I don't. But I do have some things that are in the wings waiting, really trying to be as patient as I can be. Now, the way that I've always tried to do it is obviously with my hades, well, they're different because they're full coverage. They're going to take forever. They always do. Um, and I just tick along with those. However, on my Mirabilia Ladies, I don't tend to have more than one on at the go if I can help it. Um, and the same applies for some of the other bits and pieces. So if I've got a sampler, I try and stick with, you know, I wait till I've got one sampler done before I start another sampler. That's not to say that I won't have two things going at the same time now, because that's the way I'm rolling. So the idea is that I will stitch on everything that I've got that is currently a whip, and if I get to the point that there isn't a whip that I fancy and I really fancy a new start, I'm not going to stop myself. I'm really not. Not this year. This year I'm just going to roll with it. But the game plan is, as one mirabilia drops out, 
another one will come in. As one hard anger drops out, another one will come in, um, and so forth. And if I've got one sampler on the go, chances are I'll only stick with one sampler-ish type thing. However, samplers are slightly different because, because they can be such different styles, I don't think two samplers are necessarily the same, whereas obviously two ladies or mirabilias or um, lavender and lace are very much the same. Just saying, that's my own opinion of that. So, what have we got that I would like to start this year? Well, I've got a lot that's sitting in the wings waiting to be started. So I think the best thing to do is to talk through in order of how I would plan to do it. But that's not as straightforward as it sounds. See, because my feeling and viewpoint on it is, well, just because I have a mirabilia lady on the go doesn't mean that I can't have a lavender and lace because they're two different designers. That's the way I'm going with it. So, there is movement currently for another lady to appear. The only choice is, which one? So, sitting in the wings for the ladies, I have the Mirabilia, the Fairy Moon, which was gifted to me. Now, I love this one, if I get that really close. The only thing that is a bit disappointing on this particular chart is the fact that they've put, they've stitched this on like a sandy color material, which hides all of this beautiful detail that goes up to this lovely moon. And I've looked at images of this on Pinterest and um, Google and all of those beautiful beads show up so much better on a really really dark fabric so I love this pattern I've got the beads so it gives me a rough idea of the sorts of colors and I did have some fabric that was gifted to me as well but when I've put the beads against the fabric I just think there's too much of a clash. I don't think it's doing what I wanted it to do. I need darker fabric. So, although initially I thought this was kitted up, it's not. So, I would need to get a really, really dark fabric, like almost like a, a navy, a navy midnight blue to stitch that on, is, is what I'm thinking. So, before I can start that, I will need to get some fabric for it. So the choices are, I could either start another Mirabilia Lady, which I don't think I'll do. I think I'll wait until I've got my Andromeda done before I start another Mirabilia. However, I do have a couple of uh, lavender and lace ones that one may just have to make an appearance. So we've got Angel of the Morning, which is this one. Let's take them out of the cellophane, it might be easier. So Angel of the Morning is this one, which is gorgeous, lavender and lace. And we've got Celtic Summer. Again, lavender and lace. Now, both of these gorgeous girls, as lovely as they may seem and as lovely as they are, are not necessarily the colours that I would want them. So, depending on which way I tend to swing with this, both of these ladies will require a conversion of some description because greens and yellows is just not what I want and I like all of this one so this one I love all of apart from I'm not a lover of gold wings and I'm not a lover of the purple so I would potentially change these to silver and change the purple to a pink colour is what I'm thinking because or potentially a grey. See, if I put this on a pink fabric, I could turn those silver, this bit grey, and keep this bluey colour. Or, I can keep it on a blue fabric, turn this bit grey, and turn this bit pink. So, like I say, I think at the moment my preference 
is to go with this one because this one is going to be the easier one to convert than this one because I think there's a lot more colour changes that I'll need to make in this one to make it work for me. But one of these ladies may make an appearance before my Mirabilia is finished, before my Andromeda is finished. So one of those will start this year. I can almost see it. Um, I love my Cricut collection, which is getting very close to a finish, so that will be finished this year. So then the decision is, do we go with the Cricut Collection Winter, so that it's ready for winter and ready for Christmas, because I love that one. But again, that's very wintry. But it's not overly Christmassy. So there's a possibility of that. But I think my heart is leaning more towards um, the summer one, which is here. On this one, they've done it on like a, a blue colored background. I'm thinking something more sort of lemon. I'm thinking possibly, I don't know though, cause the sun, hmm, not sure with that, but I think that will be the next choice. I'll just need to decide on the fabric. I mean, I've got so much fabric now, there must be something that I can find that would go with that. So I think once I finish my uh, Cricut collection, oh, here we go. My daughter went out last night to a nightclub for the first time in a long time. Or for the first time ever that I've ever really known it. And she's just texted me from her friends there saying, I'm not going to work. The mothery duties just never end, do they? That was my Once my spring is done, I think summer will be my next choice uh, for the Cricut collection. It will just be a decider on the fabric colour for that one, I think. So, and then possibly after that one, it will be winter. Unless, of course, I get an urge to do something all to me, which I know is a bit more on the Halloween-y side. Um, for the Cricut Collection one, so I'm not too sure about that because we don't really do Halloween. I don't stitch anything Halloween, but never say never. Um, then I've got some basic random, that's the child again, sorry. Very sick, yes. I'm not in a good way. Oh dear. Hold that thought, I need to talk to my child. Sorry about that, my motherly duties were being called upon. My daughter <laughs> went out last night. Let's just say she's feeling somewhat worse for wear this morning. And um, yeah, she needed to chat to her mummy. So <laughs> don't you just love it? Where was we? Okay, so yeah, the, um, there's two other projects well, there's two other projects that I'm going to have sitting in the wings. Um, they're slightly different to anything else that I've ever stitched. Um, and the first one is one that I got from one of my retreats last year. Um, fox gloves, uh, this by the silver lining, which is this one. Now that's not something I would normally stitch, but for some bizarre reason, I actually really like that one. And I like the simplicity of it. So if I fancy doing something just a little bit different, this may pop out to say hello through the course of the year. And the other one, which, do you know what? I've had this, I saw this stitched or partially stitched once. Absolutely fell in love with it. Got it with the intentions of doing it, but I've since been so undecided of how I want to do it and how I want to complete it. And this is the Nora Corbitch cream and sugar, the little teacups. Now, 
I don't know whether I would like to do those as individual blocks or whether I'd like to do them as suggested on the back. So you could just do them as in two, the sets, those two, those two, and those two, which is an option, but that would mean three lots of framing. The suggestion that they give you on the back of the chart is to either display them separately, vertically, vertically, or horizontally. Which is a good plan, like that. However, I'm not sure. And I think that's the reason that I still haven't started this one because I really like it and I like the little teacups because I'm a bit of a sucker for a cup. I love a good cup, the good shaped cup. Has to be a thin, slim, sipping edge. So like more like the bone china type cups. Um, and I like fluted cups. So, see, random, as random as it gets. So I quite like these little cups by Nora Corbett. But like I say, I think the thing that's holding me back is I'm not sure whether I want to stitch these in the sets of two separately so that I can do something with them. I mean, what would be nice, possibly, is to stitch them in sets of two and turn them into three little cushions. Possibly. That could be an option. But yeah. The other option is I could put them like on a bit of a stand and finish them so that I've got one set that is a bit wintry, one set that's a bit spring and summery, and one set that's, oh, I don't know. See, that one I would say is more autumn, winter-ish. That one I would say is much more summery. I wouldn't call that one all to me. That one's more summary, so I'm not sure. But I could do the sets of three and then just change them out. Or turn them into little cushions. Hmm. What do you think? But I wanted to start this not last year, the year before, and didn't because I was still undecided of how I wanted to do it. Then I thought well, I'll start it this year, and I haven't because I still haven't decided. So maybe I'll throw the question out to you. How would you finish something like that? Bearing in mind that I'm trying to pull away a little bit more from the big frame projects because I do like to leave my framing to my bigger projects. Something like that I would like to use as, as smalls or smaller projects so I can do something different with it. So if we can come up with a cunning plan of how we finish that, they may come out this year. Um, if by some small miracle, and I say by some small miracle, it would have to be a very small miracle, I was to get my um, Chatelaine Evening in the Park finished. I do have the Chatelaine Sleeping Beauty waiting in the wings. So I'd already treated myself to this. And I'd already decided on my fabric. So, oh, here's the kit of goodies. With everything in, it's got all of the beads in it. It's got all of the lovely floss in it. Again, from European Cross Stitch. And I've already selected my fabric for this. I've already made the decision and purchased it. And it's this fabric, which is um, Chromatic Alchemy 25 Camp Brittany Lugana. And it's Austri. I think it's Austri. That's how you say it. And the fact that it's got such a, a different type of model in it. So, let's see if I can. That's the fabric that I'm intending to use. 
And because I don't have a paper version of the chart, I've only got it electronically. See if I can find you an image of what it looks like. Um, haven't actually got one stitched, I've only got sort of a mock up. And this is what it looks like. So that's the Sleeping Beauty. So if by some miracle I manage to finish my current Chatelaine, this is my new next Chatelaine project. And it's all kitted and all ready to go. I mean, there's nothing stopping me starting it now. Absolutely nothing. Apart from the fact that because I am loving my evening in the park so much, and I know that if I start this one, I'll want to get this one going, which means I would need to basically not do anything on my evening in the park, and that's just not an option. So, so that is the next Chatelaine that is sitting in the wings waiting to go. Um, my daughter asked me if she gave me a mock-up of She's into gaming, so she's into League of Legends. She asked me to do a mock-up on pitch, uh, Picture to Pattern, which is Pick to Pat, of uh, gaming things. That's a design that she wants, and she's asked if I'll stitch it for her. So that is potentially going to start. I mean, it's not overly big. I mean, that's the bit of fabric. The bigger fabric's actually cut to size already. So it's not overly big really, in the grand scheme of things. So, that will more than likely, she's been badgering me, when are you gonna start it? When are you gonna start it? So that will probably come out at some point through the course of the year, if she keeps harassing me. She doesn't very often ask me to stitch her anything, so the fact that she's actually asked me to stitch her, that makes me sort of wanna, sort of wanna do it for her. Um, and then we are down to some final fuse. This one is a must. This one will be started this year. Without, well, it's just starting this year. And that is the Just Nan Crystal Rose, which is this one. Um... I'm going to substitute a lot of these threads with the silk threads that I've got from Silks For You and, um, and my Karen Water Lilies. I've already decided on my fabric. I'm not going to go with the Hessian look. I'm going to go with a pinky blue sparkly fabric, which is by Chromatic Alchemy. In what colour is this? Sorry about the rustling. This is 28 can Opal Lugana in ether. Let's get it out. I decided to go with this because obviously I'm gonna change some of the colours up, but I loved the fabric and I loved the fact that it was very, very sparkly. That was the bit I liked. So that will be starting this year, probably sooner rather than later. I might use this as one of my smalls. So when either my high heel collection is finished, this may be my next, my next small one to come out to play because I've been waiting to do this one. The thing that, when I first purchased this, the thing that put me off was obviously the specialty threads, and, or specialty stitches, sorry. Um, and when I first looked at the chart, I was a bit overwhelmed, because I was like, I have no idea how you do that. But obviously now that I've done Chatelaine's, it all sort of makes perfect sense. So, so that will be starting, and probably, I reckon in the next three months, 
that one will be started ish so that is a definite for next year we've also got the lovely northern expression needleworks celtic romance that my husband got me for my birthday which is this design and i've already got the dinky dye threads for that which i already showed showed you in a video earlier on in the year um, the only thing that I'm still undecided on with this one is my fabric choice. I'm still undecided whether I want to go with a white fabric or whether I want to go with a slightly pink fabric and sort of do a pink on pink with these threads. But again, I still need to get the fabric. This is going to be a big-ish pro project because of what it is. It's the type of sampler-ish. It's a bit like my twisted band sampler. Um, it's the same type of thing. So I consider this to be more of like a sampler type project. So it will happen. Not sure when, but that is, other than the fact that I still need to pick the fabric, that one is good to go. And then we are down to, um, my hard hanger pieces so I've got a few that I've absolutely just gagging to start absolutely gagging to start um, the first one is the one that my daughter got me for my birthday which is the Victoria sampler heart to heart sampler here it is and I would say the only thing that puts me off of actually doing this one at the minute is the rosebuds because if I bring that right in close you'll see that's actual, that's ribbon embroidery, which frightens me massively. But I do have the fabric and the cord four threads for that. So that is good to go. I just need to grow some balls and start it. Um, I mean, this is it. This is why I'm sort of undecided because obviously my little hard hanger piece is almost done. I've got two more sets of wraps to do and it's done. Other than a couple of beads to go on and how I'm going to finish it. It's an FO. So I need to make a decision. Now, obviously I've got that one, which is the Victoria Sampler Heart to Heart. I also purchased a white work one, which is Hearts Abound, which is this one, which is just white. Once again, another disruption, as always. So where was I? Um, hearts Abound, this one. So although it's all white, I decided that I wasn't gonna go all white. The fabric is white, but I've also bought different color threads. Ignore the brown one, I don't know how that one slipped in there, but I was thinking more going with greys, dark greys and the pinks. And I was thinking of changing some of the cloister blocks to a different colour so that it just sort of jazzed it up a little bit so it just wasn't white on white. So that one is good to go as well. So another one that is ready. But what the three that are really screaming at me and, and the, the, well, two actually. I've, I've got this one that I picked up from a retreat that someone else had. I like it, but a lot of the threads look to be like golds and creams because obviously I've already got some of the threads in there. It's not to say I won't do it, but I don't think it'll be something I do for me. Um, that may be something that I do for somebody else. So that one's not the one that's screaming at me, but what are screaming at me? Um, I've got two of them, and these ones are from uh, Judy Dixon on Etsy. The first one is called Autumn Promise, which is here. You should have already seen these in videos previously. So there's Autumn Promise, and there's Autumn Secrets. Now, the reason that I really like these, 
specifically is because you can do a section of it and consider it a type of finish. So if you look at the design, you could do like a block and then do a bit of drawn work and then another block. So I'm thinking that this will be one of the ones that I start Oops. along with my Victoria sampler one with the ribbon, the ribbon threads. I would need to get the threads for this because I haven't got them, but I love those, look at them. Look how gorgeous each of those little blocks are. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to control myself. And I think one of these will be started extremely soon. It will be a case of decide which one I like, order all the threads in, my lovely outlaws. <laughs> um, got me a so-and-so gift voucher for Christmas. And I am seriously thinking that, particularly the Autumn Promise, I will order the threads for that I haven't already got. It calls for DMC Pearl, Silken Colours, Thread Gatherers, uh, Krynic Silk Mori, YLI Silk, never heard of that one. Um, Mill Hill Beads, and that's it. So I'm pretty sure that other than the YLI Silk, of which they do do an alternative thread that you can go with a DMC, so it does give me the DMC equivalent, DMC and DMC Pearl, that I could switch, it, switch to if I want to, which is always a possibility. But I've got a funny feeling this one and the Victoria Sampler one will be the next, the next ones that I start with the hard hanger and drawn thread stuff. But I'm really, um, this one's screaming at me. So, so that is actually what I've got in my stash. That's not to say that there aren't other projects um, that are on so-and-so and various other places, like the smalls. I do need more smalls, because again, these aren't small. These are still quite big. So they're not things that are gonna be done quickly. I'm still looking for smalls. I just haven't found any that are really like, ah, buy me. So, um, the only other things that I said, which I said which was going to be within part of my 2019 plans, you remember I bought all those books. So I bought the Royal School of Needlework Book of Embroidery. Love this book. This book is fabulous. It's got a mock-up of all the types of stitches for things like surface embroidery, which is very much in the Chatelaines and in a lot of the stuff that I'm, I'm looking at doing now. Um, county thread beads. County thread stitch. This is an example. It's got diagrams, it's got pictures. So whenever I get stuck on a type of stitch now, these, as well as YouTube, are my go-to places. Two things. Is it two or three? Three things that I would like to try this year. One of them is in my new book, Silk Shading, which I fancied giving a go. And this book is the real, like, basics of it all. And it's the simplicity of it. So this one is just silk shading of, um, of a stem with a flower. But I would like to give that a go. Just to say that I've tried it and to see whether I can do it. So that is the first thing that I definitely want to do at some point through the course of the year. Then I got two crawl books. So I've got crawl twists and Cruel Intentions. I'm loving the Jacobean style. Um, and the first one that I think is absolutely gorgeous, that I would really like to try my hand to, 
is this one, which is called the First Sip. It's a rectangular Jacobean um, pattern in this book. And I would like to give that a go because I think that's gorgeous. Wouldn't necessarily do it in blue. I would probably do that more in greys and whites. Love that. So that's, that's something I would like to get to this year. And the other one is this one, which I think is, it's just so different. And it's got a lot of beadwork in it as well. And that's uh, Midnight Meanders. This is in the Cruel Intentions book. No, Cruel Twists book. And it's this piece. I really, really like that. There's beadwork in there. I love the colours. I love the style. So I'm thinking that I might have to give that a go as well. And if I can get to that this year, even if it's just started and, and not finished, I will be more, more, more than happy. Um, that's it. 2019 plans is basically... Try and get some stuff done that I've already got on the go. Try and start some more stuff because I can. I will need to buy some more smalls, but I think I'll buy those as the year goes on. Because like I said in my previous video, I love what I love when I see it. I don't just love something because it's by a certain designer. Um, that said, there are certain designers that, you know, I love, you know, I love, like the cricket collection stuff. I love all of the seasons ones, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I like some of their other stuff. So I think it is a case of I'm going to just need to, you know, as and when I see something that I really, really love and I'm ready, sort of nearly ready to start stitching something new that's small, that's when I'll buy it. I would like, so my plan is I would like to increase my number of whips this year. So if I can get between 15 to 20 whips this year, I'll be happy. I mean, that's not to say that I can't go over, because I can, because I can do what I like. That's the whole point of this. This, that's, this whole opening myself up to just do what I love and love what I stitch is, is, if that means that I end up with a Jessie Marie and I've got 69 whips on the go, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> no, 69 whips would give me a heart attack. I'm sorry, Jessie, I know you just, you're the guru of whips, my love, but I just couldn't do it. I would, I would like, I'd have a heart attack or something. Um, so yeah, no, I would like to get more whips than I've actually currently got, just so that it gives me more variety. The only snag with variety is you feel that you need to stitch on everything. But like I say, I'm trying to change my approach and trying to change the way I do it. So that is my 2019 plans, is get started on some new stuff, get my whip number up purely because I can and just stitch what I love and love what I stitch. That's me signing off for the end of 2018. See you on the other side, everyone. I hope you will have an amazing and happy new year and I wish you all well for 2019. So until next time, bye bye for now.